How to draw and edit dimension lines. In this figure, you can see the dimension lines indicating its distances. Now, to draw dimension lines, there is a panel on the Home tab here. Or if we go to the Annotation tab, we can have all the tools. So, there are several types of dimension lines, whose you can find them by clicking on this arrow. For now, let's start with the most common one. Linear dimension. To insert a dimension line, I just click on two points. Then I click again to put the dimension line on the place that I want. So it's very simple. However, this feature is quite complex and we usually have to set up some settings. Sometimes the dimension lines are not proportional with the sizes of the objects that they measure. So, I'm going to open the Dimension Style Manager by clicking on this little arrow. Here, I need to choose the dimension style that I want to edit. I select Standard, which is the current one, and I click on Modify. Now, there are loads of options here. But for a beginner, the most important is the size of the text and arrows, as well as the units. Go to Symbols and Arrows tab. Look for Arrow Size and put a value that seems convenient. Then the size of the text can be changed in the Text tab. As you see, both sizes have a height of 2. To confirm this, I can always measure the distance here. You can see it's 2. On Primary Units tab, I can edit the unit format. The number of decimals, let's change it to 2. And I can add a prefix or a suffix. For example, suppose that the units here are in meters. I can type the symbol M on suffix to appear after the values. Like this. Other types of dimension lines. As I showed in the beginning, there are more types of dimension lines to use in AutoCAD, depending on what we want to measure. For example, let's measure using the linear dimension, the distance between this point and this one. As you see, it's measuring either the horizontal distance or the vertical one if I move the pointer this way. But this is all fine because I can insert an align dimension. With this option, I can measure objects that are not located in the Cartesian axis. So it's much better, as you see. Angular Dimension. Now I am going to click on the Angular Dimension. This one is still simple to use. I can measure an angle by clicking in two lines that intersect each other. The angle itself I can place in any of the four sides of the intersection plane. Radius. To measure the radius of a circle, First, I'm going to draw one here. Then I choose the option to measure the radius and just click on the circle. I click again to place the dimension line. In this tutorial, I want to show you also the arc length. I can measure the distance of an arc. And yes, this only works on arcs. If I try to measure the perimeter of a circle, nothing happens, as you see. Apart from those tiles, there is the automated dimension, which is the icon here. It detects automatically what is the most suitable type of dimension in each situation. For example, if I hold this line, this square appears, and I can click on it, and I will place the dimension of the length of this line. 
I can do the same for the other lines. Let's see. For measuring an angle, I have to choose the option Angular. And then I can place it like I did previously. In a circle, the automated dimension places the diameter by default. However, I can change to place the radius instead. Now let's see some tips and peculiarities. Dim layer. On this tab at the panel dimensions, I set the layer where I want the dimension lines in. I choose the layer dimensions as I created this specially for placing the dimension lines. However, if I switch to the home tab, the current layer is lines. And if I draw a dimension line, you can see that it goes automatically to the dimension layer. Snaps on arrows. In some versions of AutoCAD, like the one that I'm using, the system snaps to the endpoints, midpoints, geometrical centers on the arrow shape. And this is a bit annoying, because usually I only want to snap to the end of the dimension line, this point. And honestly, I haven't figured out yet if there is a way to get rid of those snaps. If anyone knows, he's welcome to post a comment on this video. It would help a lot of people. However, I'm going to share with you a good way to deal with this. On Symbols and Arrows tab at the Dimension Style Manager, click on the first arrowhead. And as you can see, on this list, there are plenty of them to use. But for now, I choose Known. Automatically, the second arrowhead is updated to match the first one. The result is this. It's easier to snap to the end point. Additionally, the distances extend beyond dimension lines and offset from origin are these ones that I show on the drawing. Put zero for both. And it's even better. I can only snap to the intersection of the line below and to the dimension line end. Basically, you can make all your projects with these settings and just edit the style according to your preferences when you finish. The dimensions will be all updated. Choose the style of dimension line before drawing. Whenever we draw a dimension line, we should make sure that the desired dimension style is active. For example, I'm going to switch to Annotative and as you see, the settings there are different. Another thing, what I have been teaching during this tutorial are the standard dimension lines. All the sizes that we set on the Dimension Style Manager are according to the workspace. The annotative dimensions are the styles which are represented with this icon here. The sizes that we set are according to the real size of the dimension lines on the paper that we print. However, I will skip the, anno the annotative dimensions on this tutorial, but if you are curious, click on the card that is appearing now. Ok, it looks like we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to Cutting Black. There you can find all the content of tutorials for beginners. See you on the next occasion.